In this video, I want to talk to you about the segment of my skill endurance model called respiration. Now, we're all pretty good at breathing because, let's face it, you've got this far in life. But it is one of the top things that I'm asked about quite a lot. And it's one of the most popular blogs on the website about how uh, to breathe when running and why breathing hurts and why that first mile or that first kilometer or so is always hard in terms of breathing. So when we think about breathing in terms of uh, activities, then we have to kind of break it down into the different areas of getting oxygen in, uh, transferring that oxygen across the bloodstream, and then circulating it around to the working muscles and the other tissue, and then uh, taking away the waste products as a result of the cellular processes to do with breathing that then come out as carbon dioxide. And there are lots of different breathing techniques around and quite often they have slightly different purposes. The main benefit of most of the breathing exercises is to help you to focus on your breathing so that you can become more calm, manage your stress levels, etc. And that's why most of the breathing type practices have been that are popularized. Some of the really popular ones um, based around breath are uh, hyperventilation are really great for actually getting rid of a lot of carbon dioxide which can help us hold our breath for longer and can bring across a sense of calm and they're really good really useful breathing techniques but in terms of high performance when I talk about high performance not necessarily even elite level just running hard exercising hard then we need to be breathing because we need to be getting oxygen to the working muscles and the tissue, not holding our breath. Now, carbon dioxide is one of those substances that actually triggers our desire to breathe in, to take in oxygen. And when carbon dioxide starts to build up within our bloodstream, that triggers the in-breath. So this is why that hyperventilation type breathing that gets rid of carbon dioxide uh, basically gets rid of that trigger to breathe. So if you're going to do sort of uh, freestyle type uh, diving where you're holding your breath for a long time, that can be really good, can also be a bit dangerous, but that's, that's quite often where it's used. And as I say, used to help relieve stress. The however is with uh, activity and active working at a high level. So if you're doing interval training or you're trying racing, then what you, need to, to do is be more tolerant of a higher level of carbon dioxide. So what happens is when you start to get very active, you get near that threshold zone where you're progressively crossing over from one energy system into another. So the, your lactate, what used to be called your anaerobic system, is starting to become more dominant and your aerobic system is less active or less dominant really because it's still very active and what that means is you're getting closer to that vo2 max that point at which you're at the maximum oxygen uptake to supply oxygen to your working muscles and as you do that what happens the process it also involves lots of smaller chemical reactions and one of those is a slight build up of carbon dioxide and you can't clear it away as fast as you could when you're not working as hard. And that build up of carbon dioxide, as is a trigger for us to breathe, but we can't breathe because we're at our maximum. So what we have to do instead is slow down. So at a basic foundation level, if we want to work for longer at a higher intensity, then one of the things we have to do is build up a tolerance of having a higher level of carbon dioxide. And this is where a certain a sort of specific type of breathing technique comes in. So here I am walking up this hill. It's not a huge hill, but it's, it's a little bit steep. And already my breathing's starting to get a little bit more labored. Now normally, if I wasn't talking to you on camera, I'd be breathing through my nose right now. Now nose breathing is one of the ways that we can start to train ourselves to build up a tolerance to carbon dioxide. Now I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting off walking up a hill nose breathing but we can start simply 
by doing some rounds of nose breathing with some breath holds. That teaches you to uh, get used to something called air hunger, and that's where you are getting less oxygen in than you're comfortable with. And just like any other training, it starts an adaptation process. And the way to start this is by doing some gentle rounds of nose breathing. Now you may find this a little bit difficult if you're used to having a blocked nose, if you have some breathing conditions such as asthma, because you tend to use your mouth because it's easier. So you have to go with what you're comfortable with in terms of um, progress. So I'm going to start off just by doing some nose breathing and we're just breathing in normally in through the nose and out through the nose and trying to get into a nice rhythm of just doing that. So that's step one and you do that maybe for a minute, two minutes and just becoming aware of the fact that you are breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Now because the nose does restrict uh, the amount of air you can get in, you may start to feel a bit panicky or you may start to feel that bit of air hunger. And if you can get through it a little bit, that's fine. Obviously, if you need to then breathe through your mouth again, that's okay as well. And then you just progress so you can do a whole minute or a whole two minutes, just standing there or sitting there, just breathing in through your nose and out through your nose, just normal breaths, not trying to do big breaths. When you can do that, then we can start some rounds of um, breath holds. So you take a normal normal breath, not big breath, you take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, and then you hold your nose. And in through your nose, and out through your nose. So that breath holds about five seconds. So, so normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, hold your nose, count to about five, and then normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, and do that for maybe 10 seconds. And then do another in, out, breath hold, uh, holding your nose obviously keeping your mouth shut so we're doing that maybe for five times and then you do a minute of normal breathing and then you repeat for another two rounds uh, you do that until you get used to it and just start becoming more aware of when you're mouth breathing and when you're nose breathing and try and prioritize more about nose breathing you know, read quite a lot uh, online about nose breathing when running and how it's such a good thing to do the reality is it's actually very difficult so I'm not going to cover that right now because that's, uh, you know, you have to get the foundation right. And the foundation really is getting used to nose breathing to start off with, just statically. And when you can do the breath holds statically, you can do, you know, five minutes of doing that, not holding your breath, but five minutes of doing rounds or five second breath holds. And you can feel like you're quite comfortable doing that. Then you want to maybe introduce some breath holds whilst you're out for a walk. And that's how I uh, continually train my sort of breathing regulation, my breathing function, is when I'm out walking with the dog, I will quite often uh, just prioritize nose breathing, hold my breath nice and gently, and then I do that on the flat, on the downhills, and of course on the uphills for a bit of extra challenge. So this is kind of part one, if you like. So get used to that, and then we're gonna progress that in another video to doing a little bit more intensity.